Okay, finally starting to get towards uh, doing the corrosion protection. So this is the old one I've used. I'm going to be using the new one uh, by Viper Products, but we all know these companies really don't actually produce, manufacture, and have paint companies. They're contracted out and they take another product and they rebrand. Uh, they might have a company add a color to it or something to it, but basically to be a paint company is too big of an expense for a company that sells stuff to actually have an actual paint company. Uh, so you must know that in the, in the first place. There's a lot of, you can buy these in wholesale, in commercial application, in five gallon containers, gallon containers of different versions of these products. But these are just very convenient in the can and inexpensive so you don't have to purchase several hundred dollars of epoxies or polymers or anything like that. So this is the one I intentionally got the one that's blue because I want to see it. Uh, I like seeing it. And so I'm going to put two coats on here because this is going in a saltwater environment off the coast of San Francisco. And anybody who lives in a coast usually knows you start getting pitting and problems usually within five years. Sometimes some can make it to 10. There's um, like on Louisiana and uh, some of those coastal areas down there, guys start seeing systems rot out within five years. They already need new condensers and the fins are falling apart. This is one way to uh, put that off by another decade if applied right. So I've already cleaned and degreased the coil. I actually did it two times. And unfortunately I could not use the new Speed Clean uh, CJ200 because it came with a little defect out of the box. So we'll do that on the next Big Brother right there. What's going into the same location. Oh no, actually it's the one off to the behind me to the left. That's the really, that's going in another location. And all three of these jobs are still waiting for the roofs to be uh, resealed and recoded, and so I can't do these jobs until the roofs are finished and uh, the, needs the weather to be done because the roof application takes higher temperatures and more dry, warm days. So that's stopping my project. On these three, uh, 9,000 BTU, 18,000 BTU over there, and 60,000 BTU right there. All right. Now you've noticed I have it upside down. And since I'm putting two coats, there's a reason I have this upside down supported. Because when the paint goes through and it hits the pipe, the paint will go, it'll coat everything, but it'll also hit the pipe. It'll come down to the bottom of the pipe. And sometimes your, your coat will get a little thick at the bottom because it'll run a little bit. So up here at the top, end of the round part it'll be thin as the paint rolls off and becomes thick on this end and then on my second coat I'll take this whole unit I'll flip it up the other way and I'll coat it again so the thicker layer of paint you might have a half mill build down here quarter mill build but where the paint kind of droops off and comes down you might have almost a mill build one mill here so when you flip it upside down and you coat it a second time, when you hit the coating and it rolls off the round tubes, you'll get a really, really thin, ultra thin coat up here where it was thick before. And then where the paint rolls down, you'll have thick on the other side. That's the intent for reason for that. Uh, your edges, most important thing, right where you have the steel is one metal. You have copper, you have aluminum. When you have dissimilar metals, and you're exposed to salt airs or certain chemicals from industrial products or byproducts in the air, and then you get moisture, you actually get a battery acid. Uh, yeah, think of battery acid. You get a electrolyte, and you start building a battery that becomes uh, corrosive. And you ever see the holes develop that they're not at the bend. You'd think they'd be at the bend where they stress the copper and you get bends and you get holes right there, little tiny micro fractures or the tubes. But where you get it is right where the lumen is in junction with the copper, in junction with this piece of steel right here that has galvanized on it. And the salts build up with moisture 
and you have that little corrosive battery action going, you get that galva galvanic action going on, and you get the little tiny holes that are right under this. We're actually doing a repair on one right now on the other side of the bay where it's in the bad place, right, on the, right underneath this plate here. So we're going to pay attention to those first. And this, I cannot remove this. It's in there really good. I didn't want to do no damage. They have some little pegs that will actually, if I try to remove it, I'll damage it. Okay, you see that's blue, very, very blue. And you see I'm trying to go down at an angle because the tubes, this is two layers thick. And I don't want to go at this angle shooting in this direction. I want to go straight in and down. Now this comes in clear, but I intentionally picked this color because I like it. <laughs> and constantly shake your material, keep it in action. here at the box. I wasn't thinking as I was setting up for the camera to get it, keep it a little bit away from where I need to get down there and spray and balance this thing perfectly at the same time. Normally you should think about that when you're not thinking about a camera. So we get to see a very boring action, but I understand some guys really ask me, can we see some of these applications? So I'm taking you through the boring process of painting. Never thought I would do that before. Now here comes the problem because this is kind of in the way. So. You just gotta do the best you can do with what you're given. And remember, you don't have to get blue, they have clear so you don't see it. And I'll get all these little pipes and tubes over here. And if you're in a really bad area, you may even want to get these pipes. Uh, you ever see where they weld on all these plates? Everything is welded right here. You see the paint wear away and you see it rust and you develop a leak in a receiver dryer or accumulator or a little uh, muffler tube or something like that. So you may want to spray that if you're like right at the coast and you don't actually spray the salt water will get on this, you may want to do that too. And as you notice, I don't have a mask going on, uh, which I should have. But I have forced ventilation, what you can't see, off to this side over here, uh, what's heated. And so I have like 80,000 BTUs coming into this garage. I have the garage door open there. Uh, and it's literally forcing the air out of the garage. So I am not getting any of this stuff. I don't even know. I can't even tell I'm spraying. It does a really good job when you have a lot of flow across. And there we go. I have to get a phone call in the middle of 
And I'm not doing a retake, so you can hold because I don't recognize your number. Looks like advertisement. Now another thing, this has very minimum impact on your heat dissipation. Anything you put on a coil does lower your BTU transfer potential because it's another, another item, another product that's between the air and the metal and the coil. But having a, a unit start rotting out in five or 10 years because of a little sacrifice of BTU heat transfer capability, I'd rather have a coil that lasts 20 or 30 years than a coil that lasts five years. Now remember, I'm doing this corner right here, and the corner, you wanna make sure you're shooting down into the fins. You don't wanna be shooting at an angle because you won't get it down in. You want it to get it in. And this is not a single coil. This is a dual roll, this has two rows of coils. So trying to get your coating in there. Now in an industrial commercial plant, on a big coil you would remove it, you would send it to a coating provider, and what they do, they have both spray coatings and they have immersion dip coatings, where this would get dipped 100% below a liquid. So, it could get every in every little nick and cranny and then come out and drip off and be sprayed out because you actually have alum, aluminum and fins and a copper tube and they're only in contact they're in press contact where they just go over like that and there's these little openings these little spaces so you have this area where you have this flat part of the aluminum where a copper tube gets pushed in through so you have this kind of like little junction, this little gap, but it's kind of sealed. And you have many of them with little cracks. You really can't get under that doing a spray application. That is where they get sent off to a commercial industrial application applier and they literally dip your whole coil underneath a solution and then bring it out and it would get down into the smallest crack. This is just, a home brew method, but with a specific property, um, adhesive coat, uh, epoxy that's made exactly for coils. And that's it. I'm going to let this tack up and after it tacks up, I'll take it, I'll flip it around and I'll do the other side. Put it all together back inside of its case. And when it gets a little warmer here, springtime comes around and that roof gets finished. After that roof gets retopped, I could put this unit back up on, on that roof. And uh, that'll be a job for a future date, you guys will see. That's it. Um, oh, yeah, I've mentioned this before. The Prius um, Prime, that's a heat pump. And if you've seen how complex and expensive, you got like six thousand, seven, eight thousand dollars to do a Prius Prime car heat pump assembly. This is all they needed. They already have the electric pump. This little valve assembly does all the magic work right here. In the cars, they make it ridiculously expensive, ridiculously hard to get to some of the parts, and ridiculously complicated. When all they needed was something as simple as this. And uh, I don't know what's up with car engineers and manufacturers. They really have issues. But see you guys.